Republicans defended Congressman Paul Gosar after he was formally censured by the House for tweeting a violent video targeting a colleague. Meanwhile, former President Trump sat down for a truly insane interview with My Pillow CEO Mike Lindell, where they continued to spread their election lies. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Watching our two political parties right now is very much like watching two completely alternate realities, or like watching two teams on the same field play completely different sports. Like if the Jets showed up to a game against the Patriots in soccer gear and loudly complained every time they were tackled. I'm sorry, when you said football, you meant American football? We wrote that last night, and then, you know, then the Jets show up in vaccine news as well. We had no bad, no idea how badly they were gonna take it. For example, on the one hand, you had President Biden signing into law a widely popular bipartisan infrastructure bill that will invest over a trillion dollars in everything from roads and bridges to broadband to electric vehicles. And the best part was he didn't do that dumb thing Trump used to do where he'd hold up the bill for the cameras. <laughs> like a judge at the Olympics holding up a 10 after a floor routine. That's a joke from our new segment, remember that? Remember that? When the president used to show off the bill for the cameras like he was a waiter at a restaurant that had the specials written on a chalkboard? Was he signing a bill or doing story time at a local library? With that said, can you imagine Donald Trump reading a book to kids? That's a joke from our new segment, Imagine That. Can you imagine that? Donald Trump reading to kids what would most certainly be one of his books. So the three key deals. The three keys to any successful deal. One, think big. Two, maximize your options. And three, know a guy who knows a guy <laughs> who knows a guy with mob ties. This has been Imagine That Within, Remember That. I will say one quick thing about the Biden bill signing. And this is independent of Biden. Why do they always give the most powerful man in the world a tiny little schoolboy desk? Just because that was the right size desk for what counted as tall in 1776 doesn't mean we can't upgrade. You guys couldn't find something a little more suited to the presidency? Where's he gonna do the next bill signing? Crammed into a middle seat and coach? <laughs> Point is, that's what Democrats are up to. Republicans, meanwhile, spent their Wednesday defending one of their most unhinged members, Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar, who was censured by the House for tweeting out a violent video that targeted a colleague. A dramatic and historic day at the U.S. Capitol as the House voted to censure Congressman Paul Gosar over a violent video he posted on social media. The Arizona Republican becomes the first member of Congress to be simultaneously censured and stripped of his committee posts. The Photoshop video shows Gosar appearing to kill Democratic colleague Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and then heading for President Biden while wielding two swords. No matter how much the left tries to quiet me, I will continue to speak out. If I must join Alexander Hamilton, the first person attempted to be censored by this House, so be it. It is done. Well, this probably doesn't need to be said, but you're not Alexander Hamilton. For one thing, I would be terrified to hear you rap. My name is Paul, and I'm here to say, I forgot what I was here to say. Second, I love when these idiots try to sound smart and adopt a defiant tone by using dramatic language like, so be it, it is done. Like, you don't sound like a founding father. You sound like Cousin Greg. If it is to be said, so it be, so it is. Guys, we have been uh, watching a lot of Succession. And let me just say, I still haven't seen Sunday's episode, and I've been trying to make it all week without any spoilers. You know how hard that is? It's like trying to make it through Wipeout without getting knocked into the water by a giant piece of foam. <laughs> An obstacle course that ironically looks like something Logan Roy would make his children do as a punishment. To the obstacle course! Duck, Tom, duck! <laughs> so Gosar compared himself to Hamilton for tweeting out a violent video targeting a colleague. And by the way, to Republicans complaining that this is a waste of time, this whole thing would have been much easier and taken up much less time if you'd just been willing to step forward and say it was a deeply stupid tweet. But to be fair, he is a deeply stupid man. <laughs> Instead, we all had to be subjected to the theater of the aggrieved from the dumbest people in politics. Take, for example, what I like to call the Ertz, Louis Gomertz and uh, Lauren Boebert, whose last names both sound like insults. Boebert sounds like something a New Yorker would yell at an out-of-towner who stands at the top of the escalator. <laughs> hey, get out of the way, you Boebert! People got jobs in this city! 
You said this before, but her name sounds like a Dilbert character refuses to get vaccinated. <laughs> the joke would be something dumb like, uh, the vaccines have chips in them, and then Dilbert would say, what flavor are they, ranch or sour cream? <laughs> Which is why I'm team peanuts all the way. Lucy would never have stood for this <laughs> She had to deal with the modern GOP. She'd reopen her psychiatry booth and jack the fee up to 15 cents. You know what? I think we maybe landed that tangent. Can we get a score from the judges? A uh, three? <laughs> sure, but you're biased. The point, once again, is that while Democrats were focused on signing a widely popular infrastructure bill into law, these lunatics were defending the insane behavior of one of their most unhinged and reckless members. Gomert offered perhaps the dumbest defense, claiming he tried to freeze the video to see the violence but couldn't find it. I looked at the video enemy and was trying to figure out, I, I couldn't see. I'm told if you stop it frame by frame, you can see what uh, Democrat friends are talking about. I, I couldn't see it. I tried to freeze frame, but I didn't see the violence being talked about. These are our elected representatives, <laughs> and they sound like grandpas who accidentally FaceTime you while they're on the toilet. <laughs> My friend sent me a funny cat video, but I couldn't see the cat fall off the sofa. Then I tried to freeze frame it. I took a picture of my thumb. <laughs> and then there was Matt Gates, who tried to dismiss the video in question as just a cartoon while neglecting to mention that it was specifically doctored to make AOC the target of violence. I am no expert on Japanese anime, but I am told, and I do believe, that it is not real. An anime is fiction to the point of the absurd it's not really my thing, and it does glorify violence, but often to symbolize conflict, not realistic harm to another person. Next week, we might be indicting the Wiley e. Coyote for, uh, for an explosive ordinance against the Roadrunner. All right, first of all, he's either the Coyote or Wiley e. Coyote. He's not the Wiley e. Coyote. <laughs> there aren't other Wiley e. Coyotes walking around. Thank God, that would be a living hell for them. Hi, Lee Coyote, eh? uh, you catch that Roadrunner yet? Uh, I'm not that one, I'm a different one. <laughs> Look, am I gonna get this bank loan or not? But here's the more important point. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I wrote that part. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. But here, oh, I'm, I'll be there. Give me one more second. Here's the most important point. No one is objecting to the existence of cartoons. In general, you black <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this one was coming. I forgot this one. Wait, I want to give this a fair shot. <laughs> Let me reboot. But I'll be like, so I'm going pretend I've made a really good point. We're all serious. But here's the more important point. No one is objecting to the existence of cartoons in general, you blockhead. Peanuts callback. <laughs> uh, peanuts, incidentally, of uh, what we're gonna pay the writer who wrote that. <laughs> There's more. We all get what anime is. We understand that it's fiction. That's not the issue. Gosar tweeted a video with his face on a character who killed another character with AOC's face on it. If you did that at any other job, you'd get fired immediately. Hey, uh, Seth, um, is this a bad time to tell you that I posted a cartoon in the break room where you get crushed by a rock like I, Wiley Coyote? Wally, why did you do that? Well, I was mad I didn't get any lines in a closer look this week. Well, are you happy now? Meep, meep. I'm sorry, is Paul Gosar the only one who's allowed to be Looney Tunes? And that's a landed tangent, judges. <laughs> Our political system can't function like this, where one party, for all its many flaws, tries to govern responsibly, and the other wants to burn everything down. And there's a through line here, because the same people defending Gosar are the ones who tried to overturn the election on January 6th. Gosar himself was one of the most prominent leaders of that movement, repeatedly claiming that secret sources within the government had told him that the election was stolen, although he clearly sounded like he had no idea what he was talking about. If it's what I've been told, and I had people come to me early hours of the day after, from the Security Exchange Fraud Department to the CIA Fraud Department, that between 450 and 700,000 ballots were altered in the state of Arizona.
The day after the election, I was contacted by two individuals. One had, had security uh, and fraud uh, uh, pro jobs with the, the banking world. The other one goes from fraud from the Department of Defense. I, I'm sorry, you couldn't remember the word jobs? <laughs> when you stumble that badly on a word that simple, it's pretty obvious you're just making the up as you go. I tried that once in sixth grade when I forgot to do my math homework and it didn't go well. Mr. Myers, where's your calculus homework? Well, uh, it was eaten by my, uh, hairy pet thing. Uh, <laughs> what's it called? Uh, oh, four legs, uh, always going, grrr, you know. <laughs> also, sixth grade seems young for calculus. Also, <laughs> I like how the details in his story keep changing. From the Security Exchange Fraud Department to the CIA Fraud Department. The other one goes from fraud from the Department of Defense. Which is it, the CIA Fraud Department or someone who does fraud for the Department of Defense? Also, it doesn't matter since neither of them exist. I think your bank must have just called you about some weird charges and you got confused. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gosar, I'm from the Chase Fraud Department. We wanted to let you know about a suspicious $10,000 charge from something called Anime Photoshop Services. <laughs> no, that's a good charge, I paid them, they do good work. Sadly, this is not a fringe movement. These people are the core of the modern GOP. A majority of House Republicans voted to stand with Gosar, and a majority voted to overturn the 2020 election. In fact, the supposed leader of their party, former President Trump, actually sat down for an interview at Mar-a-Lago with one of the most unhinged conspiracy theorists out there, my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, where they squeezed into tiny chairs that I'm guessing were designed for Cabbage Patch dolls and bandied about the same BS about the election. Although, shockingly, from what I can tell, Lindell did most of the talking. A year ago, we watched the biggest crime in history unfold right before our eyes. Uh, you've compared it to a robbing of a diamond store, and uh, um, they were they were caught, and we had enough evidence, I believe, to pass it out to 300 and some million people. Here, you take a piece, you yeah. take a piece. You no know, judges, including the Supreme Court, looked yeah. at the evidence. They just kicked the can down the road and said, "We're no standing, no standing." And do you think that all that could have happened? without the corrupt media. I mean, that was the big cover-up. In closing, I want to say there's, you know, back to the election of 2020, I want to thank you and everyone does for standing firm on that. And we're going to get to it, get it gone. We're gonna, I've said we're going to melt down the machines and use them yeah. into prison bars. That's very interesting. <laughs> it's a very good idea. Oh, is it? You think that's a good idea, melting down the voting machines and using them as prison bars? <laughs> it sounds like an idea Magneto would reject for being too crazy. I don't understand, Pillow Master. Say your idea again. We're gonna melt down all the voting machines and use them in prison to make the bars. <laughs> also, that's the most I've ever seen Donald Trump let someone else talk in an interview. Even he's like, this guy's out of his mind. <laughs> Does make it extra funny that he's in a tuxedo. Trump looks like a guy whose limo broke down on the way home from the opera, nodding politely as a Guy on the subway explains to him how Pizza Rat was actually a government mind control operator. You see, the CIA trained the rat to eat the pizza so we'd all be distracted while they hacked the voting machines to make Joe Biden president for life. That's very interesting. <laughs> this is what the modern Republican Party is. There's no behavior too grotesque for them to defend, as five years of Donald Trump proved. And yet, as Paul Gosar proved again, it's a movement fueled by conspiracy theories and fantasies of persecution, focused primarily by trying to overturn elections instead of just doing their, um, doing their, what do you call them? Uh, pro uh, jobs. Thank you. <laughs> this has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses. And they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.